Welcome back friends, Mark Piotr here. I was searching YouTube for some instructional videos on how to play locomotive breath on the bass guitar. I found many videos of people playing the bass, but I didn't see anybody explaining how it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and try that now. In my opinion, the bass guitar plays a very important role in the song Locomotive Breath. So I decided to keep my bass playing as close as possible to the studio recording. This happens to be another one of those songs where the lowest note you will play on the bass guitar is a G, third fret of the low E string. The obvious root movement that you hear in the guitars is E, 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 G, D, E. However, the bass it starts not on an E, but on the B. So he's going to play B, 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 then G, but it's a low G, and then the D, and then the E. However, the real fun in the bass part is that constant sliding of the nose, which is very rough on your skin when you have round wound strings. You really should have flat wound strings to play this and go down about three frets seems to make the right sound. Try to keep maintaining contact. This was the hardest part for me as you go down and back up. Put it together and it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Now that you know the main riff of the song, let's go ahead and look at the other parts of the song. When the vocals begin, you are going to be playing this, starting on that slide, and you are going to play the riff associated with that three more times. Now at this point, you're going to change it. Instead of B, 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 G, D, E, you're not going to play E, you're going to play B again. Okay, so we're going to play... I like to play the low B on the bottom E string because it's easier to slide from here. It's going to sound like this. B, 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 G, D, B. Now we're going to slide some Bs. B, 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 B. And then we're going to play B, 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 D, E, E, and slide again as the first riff. Two. Now we change one more time to a G, 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 A, 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 B, B, slide, slide, B, 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 D, E. And then from there, it starts over as if the song started over. So picture, if you will, the first riff and then all the other riffs I just showed you. And let's consider that one time through the page of the music. Then that page is repeated four times. And that's the entire song. After the fourth page, then the song has a fade out in which you're playing effectively the intro several times. Let's try to play along to the Jethro Tull recording now at 90% of the speed. That's two. That's the vocal. Hey, 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 hey,
So stop right there. That's the end of verse 1 and the beginning of verse 2. And that's what I'm talking about one time through the page, so to speak. As I explained before, that page will be repeated four times, and then you do the outro, and you're done with the song. I hope Recording the rhythm guitar part for Locomotive Breath, I used to play the rhythm guitar part with power chords like this. <laughs> Listening to the song a little more in depth, I noticed that the rhythm guitar part is much more simple. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you enjoy playing along to Jethro Tull as much as I do. Thank you for watching.